Hello everyone, Rob Guest from Football.London here and welcome to the latest episode of Gold and Guest Talk Tottenham sponsored by NordVPN. There's no Alistair Gold once again, so I am joined by the head of football at Football.London, it's Lee Wilmot. Lee, how are you? Hello Guesty, um, yes, I'm, I'm well thank you. Um, as anyone who listened to me on the pod last week will know, I'm, I'm heading to New York um, tomorrow in fact, so I'm in high spirits. Um Probably only my third holiday of the year compared to Ali's, um, what, what are we on now, 27, 28, something like that? It's about 50, I think. <laughs> we, we, we can't really make that joke, as you were on holiday last week as well, to be fair. Did you, did you have a good time? Yeah, good week off. Uh, very cold where I went in Norway. Uh, I think it was like minus eight in Oslo during the day with like a high of minus five. So, yeah, it was like tropical climate when I came back here. <laughs> at the weekend but i was no. um, I've, I've been constantly looking at the new york weather hoping um because it's my first trip over to new york um hoping that there might be might be a little flurry of snow given it's getting close to uh december but i don't think we're going to get any when we're out there which would be a shame you'll be there i'm sure you saw it? enough snow well, yeah. there. yes thanks thanksgiving is, is thursday uh tomorrow yeah. i think isn't it it is yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah, we'll Good be landing in busy period. Yeah, and I've been and I've been told it's going to be extra busy as well because obviously it's Black Friday um, in New York yes. as well on Friday. So uh, yeah, there's going to be people everywhere, as if there aren't already people everywhere in New York. Yeah. So uh, before we get into today's show, uh, first of all, I just want to share with you a brand new publication from Reach PLC, celebrating and covering everything that is women's football. It's a monthly magazine of wall-to-wall women's football, including our very own Tottenham women's team, of course. If you want to know more or grab a copy, head over to the episode description box and order yours today. Right, let's talk Tottenham then. Uh, it's been a bit of a quiet period for Spurs, hasn't it? So, I mean, Have we got anything to talk about? <laughs> I'm sure we can find stuff to talk about. It might be a shorter podcast than usual. Uh, there's a few bits to talk about, especially... With it being the international break, thankfully it's coming to an end and Tottenham will be back in action on Sunday against Aston Villa at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Certainly a game Spurs need to win after those past two results. And I think Ange Postacoglu can take a few positives from uh, the international break. I think one of them being Rodrigo Benson Kerr getting a good amount of minutes under his belt. Uh, first of all, last week Uruguay played Argentina. I think he came on for about 25 minutes or so off the bench. And then last night, uh, Uruguay played Bolivia in another World Cup qualifier and he started the game 86 minutes. Uh, So given he has been, you know, increasing his fitness in recent weeks with those cameo appearances off the bench against Palace, Chelsea and Wolves, you'd think he's in a good position to be starting games now for Tottenham. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, 86 minutes last night um, yeah. from, from the start. Um, he's it's kind of... It, it was obviously... Um, it's Marcelo Bielsa who's in charge, isn't it? It's obviously um, Bielsa's um, prerogative to, um, to to give him a start. Um, we're obviously looking on um, concernedly, I suppose, just in case, um, hoping that he's going to make it through. Um, everything seemed to be fine. Um, if he's if he's done 86 minutes, everything would seem, would seem to be fine. And um, he was clearly wanting to start earlier at Spurs than, than he was was brought back anyway. Um, it, there was that quote from him, wasn't there, that he was he was ready um, ready to start earlier and, and Tottenham put the, the, the waiting time back a little bit. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, um, fingers crossed, we'll see him starting um, against Aston Villa this weekend. Um, and what a... What a plus, what a positive that'll be considering the injuries that we've got and the problems that Ange Postacoglu is on to overcome with, with squad availability at the minute to, to have Rodrigo Benzenko fit and, and firing um, and, and ready to play. Um, did you see any of the highlights from the game? From from what I've seen from last night's game, looks like he was playing in a bit more of a withdrawn role, kind of a more defensive role. Uh, I've not seen any highlights. I was looking at his numbers and pretty good. I think he'd won, what, 8 of 11 duels. Pass success rate was about 92%. Uh, yeah, I think it sounds like he's done well and, you know, for him to have played 86 minutes is clearly there in terms of his fitness now. Uh, I think the worry when, after such a long-term injury, then you lose the player to international duty. I think Andrew Postacoglu and everyone at Tottenham would have been, you know, just having the fingers crossed he comes through period unscathed and you know 
credit to Bielsa because they played Argentina in the first game and you're thinking you want to go with your strongest lineup, put Benson Kerr in, but on the bench got about 25 minutes or so and then started last night against Bolivia. Uh, yeah, I think he's just been desperate to be you know, playing more in recent weeks. Uh, but I think the thing is once you have such a serious injury like that ACL, you just can't rush a player back in uh, just because you now something could happen again and for him to be on the sidelines for a longer period. But <clears throat> he's, you know, he's come through these last two games and with Ange Postacoglu needing to make a change in midfield now against Aston Villa uh, on Sunday, he's certainly in the running, most certainly. It'll be interesting, won't it? Um, you, you would think... Um, he would start. I think the only the only way he wouldn't start is if um, Ange Postecoglou goes for um, Hoybier alongside Pape Sar, um, and then Giovanni Lo Celso in the, the more advanced role. Personally, um, I think I'd probably I'd probably play. I think I think I think I would play Bentancourt in in, in either of the roles if if he could he could play alongside Pape Sar um, in that that kind of more defensive role and then play Lo Celso in front. Um, or you can play Hoybier alongside Sar and then play Bentoncourt in that more attacking role. So, um, I, yeah, for me, I think he has to start. Um, it would be, it'd be great to see him start and, and get back and firing in the Premier League again uh, after what he did last season. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. We will go more into the lineup against Villa uh, towards the end of the podcast. But, yeah, I think he's certainly pushing for a start now and won't be surprised at all if he's in the starting lineup on Sunday. Another player who will be pushing for a start, as you mentioned, Giovanni Lo Celso. He's been away on Argentina international duty. Bit of a mixed uh, round of fixtures for Argentina. Lost 2-0 against Uruguay at home, but then last night went and won in Brazil. 1-0, Nicolas Otamendi scoring the only goal of the game. Really good header from a Giovanni Lo Celso corner. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Not bad. Um, he he's well liked um, in the Argentine Argentine national setup, isn't he? Um, they they were really um, really upset and and disappointed when he couldn't make it to the World Cup. Um, obviously, he did all right without him <laughs> in the end. But um, but yeah, he's well liked over there, and just it just kind of it just hasn't worked. It hasn't kind of he hasn't done it for Spurs has he considering how yeah how important he is to that Argentina team it's very it's a very strange situation for him yeah I mean they've done a piece on him uh, today and I said at the end like he's done it for Argentina he's done it pretty much every club he's been at Real Betis I mean his former Real Betis is why Tottenham wanted to bring him to the club at the end of the day he did really well on loan at Villarreal and he's just been such a stop start time for him at Tottenham. I think it's his fifth season at the club now. He's just never really got going. I think he's had a couple of periods where he's had decent runs of games and looked okay. I think one of those was his first season at the club uh, once Mourinho came in around January, February time. But injuries, you know, just halted his progress at Tottenham. And it's just such a shame, especially when you see him flourishing on the international stage for Argentina. Uh, the first game against Uruguay, he was a sub came on but he started last night uh at the Marikana and played 70 odd minutes and this is the Giovanni Lo Celso we want to see play uh for Tottenham and surely now he's thinking no James Madison for a period of time up until early next year he's, he's got to be playing he's got to play more I think it was certainly extremely unlucky to miss out on the 11 at Wolves uh, just before the international break, but came on, almost scored. I think he was the one who gave away the free kick, wasn't he? Uh, where Threw himself about a bit, didn't he, when he came on? Yeah, well, I mean, he's always gone to. Uh, I just think he needs the minutes now to prove his worth, that he does have a future at Tottenham under Posta Coglu. Yeah, it'll be, it's going to be an interesting month or so, isn't it? With the January transfer window open very, very soon. It's um, there's a lot of players in there that are kind of fighting for their futures and and one just wondering what what's going to happen next. Um, I think we all expect Ange to go into the market and and make a few additions given the um, the 
the number of players that we've got out injured at the minute and the, the players that are going to be away on international duty in, in January as well. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting um, few weeks. Um, and we, we may well see someone like Giovanni Lo Celso just kind of picking up the baton um, and, and really, really having a go because he he's kind of putting himself in the shop window um in a sense as well um if it's not if if not to to stay at spurs then then to have other people looking at him thinking oh we could we could we could have him um we could we could take a punt on him yeah i mean he's the natural replacement for madison as well and while i could see why hoybeg started last time out of Wolves, because i think he definitely deserved to after a really good showing at chelsea you know spurs were lacking in that midfield free going forward and it was a game made for Lo Celso really to try and have an influence in the final third. And it just begs the question, you know, if Madison's out injured and Lo Celso's not starting, then what was the point in keeping him? Yeah. Well, but, but it's one of these. Hopefully we'll see come uh, Sunday against Aston Villa that he will be in the team. But big decision for Ange Postacoglu to make because, yeah, he does need to make a change in midfield, but you've got Benzica, you've got Lo Celso certainly pushing for starts. I think we've mentioned it before, haven't we? If, if he's not starting again this weekend and then it's getting to the Man City game where he's obviously he's got a goal against Man City when he when he first arrived at the club, hasn't he? So we, we, he did. Yeah. Could, could, could make an argument for him playing in that game, obviously, if you're one of those superstitious people and look, look at omens like that. Um, but he, he'll be knocking on the door, won't he? Saying, "Well, you 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 convinced me to stay because I was going to have an opportunity in, in the side this this season." But it's not the, it's not been the case thus far. No, it hasn't. Uh, just going on to a few more positives in terms of the international break. Uh, Pat Matassar scoring his first goal for Senegal the other day against South Sudan. Uh, I think that was in the final win. Scored after a minute, so I think they will certainly been pleased to uh, have netted his first goal for his country. I think he, what we've seen from Saar so far during his Tottenham career, he likes a shot from distance yeah. uh, and got a goal at the start of the season against Manchester United and you now it'd be good to see him getting on the score sheet a few more times between now and the end of the season. So he's certainly got it in him. I was going to say, we, we saw it in the World Cup. He, he was quite yeah. happy to have it. When he came on in those games in the World Cup, the first thing he did was have a shot from about 25 yards, I think, and then did it again about five minutes later. Um, and then we've seen it at Spurs already that he's quite happy to, to do it. So, um, yeah, it was a, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen the goal and I don't know if it's um, if he meant the control, but his control took him away from the defender on the edge of the box and then he had that space to then to then take a low shot past the goalkeeper. Um, if he did mean it, it was excellent control and, and, as I say, got him away from the defender brilliantly. So, yeah, really good, really good for him to get that. And it just adds to uh, what's been an excellent season so far for him, doesn't it, really? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, someone else who was on the score sheet uh, over the international break, Son Hyung Min. I mean, it wouldn't be an international break without <laughs> a bit of an injury scare for Son. And that was the case in the first game against Singapore. I think he went to ground, uh, needed a bit of treatment, managed to play on for the full 90 minutes, uh, spoke after the game, said he was fine, and then he started... The other day against China, uh, two goals and an assist for Son. So not a bad way to round off the year for him. Shushing the crowd as well, wasn't he? Shushing the crowd. I apologise. I think my um, my internet went a bit ropey there for a second. So I may have frozen for anyone that's watching on YouTube. Um, hopefully I wasn't doing anything stupid with my face. Uh, but yeah, it, you, you're absolutely right. It's... Um, it wouldn't be an international break without something going on with Sun. It seems to happen every single time, doesn't it? Was it the last one or the one in um, in September where there were the pictures of him with the ice around his foot as he as he came out of um, one of the complexes uh, on international duty and sent everyone into a frenzy, but everything was then fine because he played a, a day later or whatever it was or was in training a day later. Um, yeah, he's, he's the main man, isn't he, for his country. He's the main man for Spurs this season. Um, we could do without him um, having injuries, um, given the number that we've got at the minute. Um, but everything seems to be okay with him. And uh, yeah, another another goal in what looked to be a little bit of a um, a feisty affair with, with China. But hopefully he comes back okay. And I'm sure we'll see him starting through the centre against um, Aston Villa on Sunday. Yeah, a couple more goals would do nicely uh, on Sunday against Villa. Because like I said earlier in the pod, Spurs... No need to get back to winning ways, especially after those uh, last two results. And yeah, just need Son to keep on scoring. Uh, thankfully, 
wasn't an injury after going down. So, right, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, you kind of look at the look at the league table and you think, well, two defeats in, in ten games um, is, is isn't bad, but because they've both come together yeah, yeah. Um, right before the international break, it makes it look a little bit worse, doesn't it? Um, sorry, twelve games, two defeats in twelve games. I should say. I was just checking. I've, I've it, lost track of a couple of games somewhere. It does. And I saw someone saying the other day, I don't know if this was on, I think it was on social media, uh, season's over. <laughs> <laughs> Two points off the top after, what, 12 games. But it is just because they had a really bad week and all those injuries uh, mounting up. But if you'd offered Spurs that position the first week of August, you'd be two points off the top in the top four. You'd have snatched their hands off. Absolutely. I must admit, I did jokingly say after those the back-to-back results, <laughs> oh, well, the title charge was nice when it lasted for 10 games, but <laughs> there we go. We're, we're still in there. Um, it, it'll be interesting how we deal with these injuries in the, the coming weeks and how we get to January. If we get to January and we're still in and around it and the players are coming back, then um, I think I've said it before, then you, you, you do start to get excited. Um, Talking of exciting, um, it doesn't get more exciting at Tottenham Hotspur this season, uh, as we've seen. And the best way to soak up all the atmosphere is inside premium hospitality. Guaranteed seats to all home matches. You can indulge in unforgettable dining experiences at Spurs world-class stadium and enjoy exclusive member-only events outside match day two. Premium at Tottenham Hotspur. It's unmatched. Visit TottenhamHotspur.com forward slash premium to find out more. Um, before we move on to any more Spurs stuff, the big news um, this week concerns your club, Guesty, um, and Everton's points deduction. Um, there's lots of rumours flying around about Chelsea and Man City, and there's even been a talk of a Jermaine Defoe transfer to Portsmouth, what, 16 years ago, and Spurs being brought into it. Um, yeah, just it's, what, what's, what have you made of everything that's gone on um, this week in terms of um, your club? Uh, I think the punishment is extremely harsh uh, for spending what about twenty four million over. Uh, it's yeah, minus ten points, it's ridiculous. But I think they're just seen it as setting a precedence, really, because everyone's been talking about well, Man City, one hundred and fifteen charges, Chelsea. It's like when's this actually going to happen? And if you're giving Everton minus 10 points, then surely, like, City, you're going to be relegated a few divisions. And that, uh, yeah, just that it's so, so harsh, the punishment. Yes, the club have spent over the top, but try to build a new stadium uh, during COVID and that, and obviously things have happened. Uh, but I think, in all honesty, if you're going to lose 10 points in any season, this is probably the season, given the like When you're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, we've done all right. And we should really have a few more points on the board, uh, given some poor results in the opening weeks of the season when we played well, but just weren't managed to, to finish off games. Uh, so you got the likes of Luton, Sheffield United and Burnley, who could look like they end up going straight back down. Uh, but for Everton, I mean, if results go the way... The win at the weekend against Manchester United, they can be straight out of the bottom three again. So hopefully, obviously the club really, really uh, unhappy with the punishment. Gone to appeal it. If it goes to appeal, hopefully it's eradicated or at least reduced. Uh, But I think it's just left everyone wondering what's going to happen with the likes of City and Chelsea. And I know there's plenty of stuff on the Football London website, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been that. plenty that we've talked about around it. Um, it does, the cynical part of me does feel like, and um, this is not to belittle your team in any way, um, it does It does feel like because Everton aren't part of the elite, as it were, at the moment, that they've made they've made an example um, out of the club. If, if it was the likes of Chelsea, well, well, we know there's issues that, that need to be investigated at Chelsea. There's no, there's issues that are being investigated at Man City. Um, it does kind of feel like they're making an example out of a club that's not one of the kind of one of the elite at the moment which seems a bit wrong given Everton's history and standing in the game over over the years um and then we kind of we spoke before we came onto the pod obviously about that um that Jermaine Defoe situation how how far back are people going to go with, with this stuff um if, if we're looking at something that is yeah you know, what is it 16 years that uh, 16 years ago that that was Two, 2008 so it's like you said how far are you going back you're just going to start going back to the 90s 
and that now is ridiculous. If no action was taken at the time, then how can action be taken now? Yeah, exactly. It's just one of these things. Uh, what we also did speak about before coming on the pod in relation to Everton was the Richarlison transfer. Uh, obviously, it was saying in the report Everton had budgeted about eighty million. Uh, Richarlison in the end sold him. 660 and uh, the club obviously needed to get it done at the end of june for that to be on on the books needed the money desperately so it's what you're saying if, if it's if uh, everton are 24 million pounds out you're saying that it's all spurs fault essentially um that with that that loss of 20 million <laughs> no no um i'm not i personally <laughs> think he probably should have gone for more than 60 million because i mean the amount of Big, big moments he produced for us in, you know, really, really uh, crucial games, especially that season where we stayed up, uh, season before last. Always produced for us, Brazil's number nine. Uh, given the, you know, the market value, of, you know, some probably average players going for a hell of a lot of money. I thought you'd be looking at least 70, 75 million for him. So I thought that was, you know, at the time, a decent deal for Spurs, 60 million. It's not turned out like that <laughs> so far. But what I would say is, you know, Daniel Levy and Tottenham, you do the best for the club. You get the best yep. deal you can. You don't do, oh, this club's in trouble, they need X million more. Oh, we'll give them that. You, you don't do that. You look after your own club, first of all. So, no, it's unfortunate that Everton didn't get maybe get the money they wanted, but no, I totally understand it. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, Daniel Levy's never worked like that in being um, sentimental, has he? <laughs> He'll get the best club for his uh, best deal for his club that he can possibly get. So, um, yeah, um, we've, we've already spoken about um, Celso um, already in this podcast, but we probably should move on to him again in terms of um, transfer talk because um, he's been he's been linked with a move away um, already today, hasn't he? Yeah, uh, there's been talk of him past few days uh, making a move to Barcelona in January. That's nothing new. There was rumours of a move to uh, Barca in the summer. Move never come to fruition, but it's because Gabby's out injured now. I think long-term ACL injury, so they're going to be looking for a replacement. No surprise to see La Celso linked with Barca, as he has been in the past. Always done well in Spain with Real Betis and Villarreal, but... If you're looking from a Tottenham point of view, surely you just keep him. <laughs> it's a no-brainer, especially given Madison's current situation. And you're hoping now that La Celso will be able to get a bit of a run of game, show uh, Ange Postacoglu and everyone at Tottenham what he can produce. So for me, it's just one of these, unless it's a stupid amount of money that's going to be offered. But is that going to be the case, given Barca's financial situation? No, uh, then you just keep him. Yeah, I, um, Daniel Levy's probably sitting there thinking, "Well, let's let's um, let's see him in the starting lineup for the next um, next next month under Ange Postecoglou. We could add a few more millions onto his uh, onto his price tag for January." But um, yeah, it he as you said, he's he's done well in La Liga before. It, it would make sense for Barca to kind of make a move for him and for him to be linked there. Um, I'm sure they've got other targets as well, but. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting um, if he, if he gets a, a run of games and if he can put, as I say, put himself in the shot window for for a January transfer. It would it will all depend on how much I think he's offered. Um, I think prob I think Daniel Levy will probably cut his losses on him if if a reasonable offer came in. Um, I can't even remember how much was it twenty seven million that they they signed him for in the end. There was lots of talk of about forty initially, weren't there? But I think it ended up being about twenty seven million after his initial loan. Yeah, but I think the initial loan cost quite a bit of money, so it might have totaled like forty million plus. Yep. Uh, in the end, not exactly value for money from a Tottenham perspective so far. But you now there should be an opportunity there in the coming weeks for him to make make that case. Uh, it was fantastic in the summer, in pre season, really, really impressive uh, in those games, and he's just not gone his way and. I mean, you can understand why, given the form of James Madison, that quad strain's not exactly helped his cause. And I think it's about 83 minutes he's played across four games. Uh, the Fulham game where he started, I thought he'd done all right, you know. Uh, and then, obviously, he was replaced at half-time with the injury. 
And then he's come on against Bournemouth, Fulham and Wolves. And, you know, when you're getting 10 or 15 minutes, that's it's probably, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably about enough time to get up to the speed of the game. It's not enough time, you know, to influence things. Uh, and especially, you know, like the Bournemouth game when you're 2-0 up already in the game's won, the Fulham one as well, there's not really much he can do. So, yeah, I can understand the frustrations from him. But as I said, Madison's out now. There should be more opportunities coming his way. If Madison comes back in the new year and Barcelona come in with, say, 30 million, do you think Spurs would take that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm not sure what the contract status is. I think there might be another year, 18 months. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. So if that was the offer, then I think you'd certainly have to strongly consider it. But that's all got to be dependent on Geo's farm between now and January. Yeah, June 2025, so he's got a year and a half left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone else who's been linked with a move away uh, over the past week, another young Argentine, it's Alejo Valiz. Obviously, he joined the club uh, from Rosario Central in the summer. Well, only seen him a couple of times. Uh, brief cameo appearances against Liverpool and Luton. Played a couple of times in the EFL Trophy away at Colchester and Peter United. I think he's certainly one for the future. We're going to see him on the bench, I'd probably say pretty much every week now, uh, between now and the end of the year, just due to the amount of the injuries. He's been linked with a low move to Bologna. Would that be something you'd consider come the same year? It'll be, yeah, I think it's all going to depend, isn't it, on the, the time scales of the likes of Mano Solomon um, and Richarlison coming back from injury. Um, if they're if they look like they're going to be back in the early part of 2024, then I suppose it would make sense for release to to go out and get some minutes um, under his belt somewhere else on on loan. Um, given that you have got some some players in the in the youth setup that could probably sit on the bench and uh, when come come on when called upon. Um, if they if if we're lacking in that department um, with the injuries. I, I don't see why you would let him go. Really, if he, he he's not quite ready yet, obviously. But if you can throw him on for five ten minutes um, at the end of matches to try and get you something, put himself about a bit, and give him that little bit of experience and a bit of physicality in the Premier League, um, I think you, you'd keep him um, around the club. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think maybe a loan move would be beneficial but I think it might be beneficial to Belize to you know stick about at Tottenham for another six months or so until the end of the season and I suppose it's also going to be dependent on potential incomings in the forward line uh, as well Spurs do have you know they have options to play through the middle Richarlison, Son uh, I suppose Brendan Johnson can do that role as well but given Tottenham's position there's going to be some FA Cup games on the agenda uh, come January, where hopefully there'll be more than one. Uh, yeah, some opportunities might come his way. Uh, can see the why it would be beneficial for him to go out and learn. Uh, but we're only a couple of weeks away from that uh, FA Cup draw now, aren't we? It's always, um, I'm of a certain age where I'm always excited by the third round uh, draw, to be fair. Yeah, week after next, is it? Second yeah, round, so, so yeah. draw on the weekend or the Monday. More than likely. So, yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Uh, hopefully, kind draw for Tottenham. And it would be nice if they did get like a lower league team to give likes of Valise, Jamie Donnelly, yeah. uh, Alfie Dorrington, players like that, an opportunity in the team to show what they can do. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's one we'll all be looking forward to. Right. As we're now at the halfway stage of the podcast, uh, I'll let you know about the benefits of using NordVPN as Alistair's not here. <laughs> so if you're not aware by now, the Golden Guest Top Tottenham podcast is sponsored by NordVPN and you can use the service in a host of different ways to enhance your internet experience. NordVPN is the fastest VPN in the world. That means there's no buffering, no lagging, and you can stream your favorite shows from anywhere in the world without your bandwidth throttling. You can use Nord to set your device to thinking it's back in the UK and just watch them as normal. Not only that, but the outlay on the Nord VPN subscription is cheaper for you in the long run. 
And that's because you can purchase streaming services in other countries at a much cheaper rate. So for example, you can change your virtual location to Australia and you can maybe book flights from Australia or another country you want to book flights from and also security wise it's a great system for pretty much going as far as you possibly can to stop people stealing things off your device if you connect to a public wi-fi such a clever app that you can install on any device that you've got quite frankly and it's very easy to set up and you get straight on and going with it there's a whole host of other benefits from signing up to nordvpn so why not give it a go you can grab your exclusive nordvpn deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash gold guest to get your huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. I'll probably be using it tomorrow, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on Sunday as well to watch the Villa yes. game. Yep. Uh, well, um, I think I'll be going to... Um, I think people have messaged me, um, and Ali said it in the, the, the pod last week, Flannery's Bar um, in New York, I think, is the home of um, Spurs in New York. So... I've, I've already told my wife we're going there um, to watch the game on Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Early start. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. The well, Villa she doesn't game. mind so much because then that's that's done and then the rest of the day's ours in New York then. So it's all right. Yeah, true. Right. The Villa game then. Uh, this is a big, big game. Uh, in the Premier League table at the moment, Spurs are in fourth, Villa fifth, only points separating the sides. Uh, both making excellent starts to the season, both in the mix for Champions League place uh, come the end of the term as things stand. This uh, should be quite a good game, this. Yeah, I think so. It's um, it, it, it offers the opportunity of pushing the top four just a little bit away from everyone else as well, doesn't it? Um, if, if Spurs get the win, obviously. Aston Villa have had a great start to the season and just kind of hanging around there, um, annoying the likes of Tottenham, Arsenal and, and Liverpool at the minute by being there. Um, probably annoying Manchester United more than anything. The fact that they're, um, they're four points ahead of them in the table, um, given United have gone on a pretty good run of, what, 1-0 wins. Uh, not exactly been ripping up trees, but they seem to be getting results and they're, they're writing it around it. But yeah, if Tottenham win, opens up a little bit of a cushion um, to everyone else in, in the battle for the top four. And um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be going three straight defeats um after the start to the season we had um home form's good want to want to continue that home form in front of the um the home fans obviously but yeah it's just, it's going to be a tricky one you know emery's done well um at villa but the the one thing is their home aston villa's home form is far superior to their their away form they have had a few dodgy results on the road villa so that's hopefully one thing that spurs can capitalize on on sunday yeah <clears throat> can you remember the predictions we did at the start of the season who tipped villa Champions League. <laughs> no, who tipped Villa? Tell me, Dusty. <laughs> yeah, uh, I put them down. I was really, really <laughs> impressed with them uh, at the end of last season. I mean, there was a period where it potentially looked like they've gone to go down when Steven Gerrard was in charge and Emery just like transformed them, just seemed to come from absolutely nowhere into the European places. And then there was probably a period, end of April, start of May, we thinking. You know, they could even mount a run for a Champions League place the way they were going. They've got such a fantastic team. And I thought the summer transfer business was superb, you know, bringing Yuri Thielmans in on a free transfer, Moussa Diaby from Bayer Leverkusen, who was ripping it up in the Bundesliga. He's done really well. Paul Torres, who was, you know, linked with Tottenham time and time again. He's a really good centre-back. And got Clement Longley, former Tottenham uh, loanee from last season. Zaniola. Another one linked with Tottenham in the past. Uh, then I've got such a good manager in Emery. The scoring goals are fun, especially at home. Uh, I think Villa are going places at the moment. I think this is going to be a really, really uh, tough game. And like you said, you don't want to, having lost the last two, lose this one, and then going into the, the following week away at Man City. So you need to try and get a, a positive result. And as you mentioned, looking at Villa's uh, results so far this season on the road, been rather mixed. One, two, uh, drawn one, lost three. They did lose heavily at Newcastle on the opening day of the season. They lost 3 nil against Liverpool as well. And then a bit of a shock last time out on the last away game when they lost 2-0 away at Nottingham Forest. So... 
yeah, then I suppose they'll be hope, hopeful uh, to catch them on a bit of an off day, but they've got quality right across the team. You know, John McGinn's a fantastic player, Ollie Watkins as well, uh, Kamara, Diaby, really, really good team of Villa. Yeah, they absolutely are. And it's, we've said already, we've, we've got to right the wrongs of what happened at Wolves. The, Chelsea's a bit, bit of a freak, um, yeah. given the kind of indiscipline, but that Wolves game, uh, just it was just really poor. Um, apart from the first three minutes, obviously, um, it was it was really poor thereafter, and the kind of that lack of attacking intent um, in the rest of the game. We need to go out there and and kind of and and take the game to Villa uh, essentially um, and show show what Spurs are about. And, and if we do that, I think we've got the players with the injuries we've got. I, th- I still think we've got the players to hurt Villa um, more than, than they can hurt us. Yeah, uh, I think key to that taking the game to Villa is changing the midfield because I think against Wolves it was just too defensive with obviously Hoybieg, Saar and Basuma in there there was no one to link up playing the final third or you know just get forward progressive passing uh, so for me I would start Lo Celso in the Madison role give him that opportunity uh, but I'd also bring Benson Kerr in instead of Hoybieg I'd go yep. with Ben Takersa and Lo Celso. Uh I mean, there's Oliver Skip as well, who's uh, someone who'll be, who will have been trying to make his case to Ange Postacoglu over the past week or so as he went on international duty. I don't think with the under 21s uh, So there's options there. Uh, who would you go with? I think what you've said there is right. After the Wolves game, um, when you see Basuma, Saar and Hoybier playing in that, that three, it, it's, it puts a lot of emphasis on the three forward players, essentially. I think to to make a real statement at home against Villa, to go with Saar, Bentoncourt and Lo Celso, just, just sparks, uh, kind of smacks of attacking intent, really, um, getting the likes of Bentoncourt, and we know Saar likes to get forward as well, um, the likes of Bentoncourt, Lo Celso, supporting Johnson's uh, son, Kudasevsky, five players that can really get forward. I think that really shows, um, we'll make a statement and that we want to go out and win this game. And uh, Ange Postacog is where football, isn't it? He does want to go out and win win games of football, um, play in the right way, um, which is why that, that kind of midfield surprised me um, against Wolves. Um, before we move on, um, Ali's not here, um, but I just want to um, point everyone to our Alistair Gold newsletter that is um, comes out weekly. Uh, we've got a fantastic Black Friday offer on um, Goldie's newsletter running until midnight on Monday. We're offering a massive 75% off an annual subscription. So for just £10, you get a year's worth of exclusive newsletters from Ali straight to your inbox every week. There'll be analysis and insight from behind the scenes at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, interviews, features and Q&As that you won't be able to read anywhere else. Just a tenner, not much more than a pint at the game. Uh, to sign up, you can go to spurswithalistagold.substack.com forward slash Black Friday. How much is a pint at the game? Um, I think it's uh, six fifty. Right. Expensive. Well, it's expensive everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh just going back to the Villa game then, obviously we've said who would start in midfield. In terms of the team, I think it pretty much picks itself, but there should be a change at the back, you'd like to think, with Destiny Doggy, who was suspended uh against Wolves uh in the last game following those two yellow cards against Chelsea, he should you'd be thinking uh, in contention because he uh, wasn't part of the Italy squad uh, for their Euro 2024 qualifiers that kept him out because of the muscle injury he had in recent weeks what he picks up against Fulham and missed the Crystal Palace match so a good couple of weeks at Hotspur Way, you'd think yeah, he should be back in the team just opens up the possibility of kind of inverting those fullbacks again, doesn't it, yeah. with, him, with him in the side. Um, Emerson Royale didn't exactly um, cover himself in glory against Wolves and did nothing for my fantasy team after I put him in. I, I took a doggy <laughs> out, obviously, and put Emerson in because I knew he would start and um, got, me, got me no points. So he'll be coming straight back out again. Um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to see your doggy back in, in the team. Um, it's, it's, you just don't think a, a young player like that and the kind of his, his loss is felt so much so much you, you wouldn't expect it would you no uh, i mean he's made such an impact at tottenham uh this season since he returned from his uh year back on loan at 
Udinese. He's been absolutely outstanding. And yeah, that was a huge, huge miss not to have a doggy at left back making those runs forward. But I mean, I think you're always going to struggle when you take probably four of the best players in the team out in Van der Van, uh, Romero, a doggy, and Madison. Their absences were certainly felt, so it will be nice to have a doggy back uh, in the team if that is the case on Sunday against Villa. I think I thought Emerson had done well in his cameo appearances, but he's not someone who's gone to, you know, make the same runs as a doggy going forward and have that impact that uh, a doggy does. So, yeah, uh, I think it would just be nice to have him back in the team and. I think Villa will be looking forward uh, to coming up against no. them because you know what he can offer going forward. Do you expect the two um, centre-backs to, to stay the same? Do you expect Dyer and Davis to be the ones? Yeah, I think it'll pretty much defence apart from a doggy coming in and the front three will just be as it was uh, against Wolves, I think. Yeah. No no, no, no chance of Ashley Phillips getting a, getting a run out? Uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, with Ashley Phillips uh, it's Alfie Dorrington who was on the bench as well uh, I thought Ben Davis did well against Wolves came out with man of the match award yeah. uh, Dai did alright not as good as Davis and but this is the thing Spurs were six minutes away from winning at Wolves I think especially with Dai having the experience when you're coming up against someone like Ollie Watkins yeah I think it'll keep it the same yeah, it's just uh, yeah. Let's not get into that again. Me and me and Ali had a, a long conversation <laughs> on the pod last week about um, those those players and that have been around for a while and always the scapegoats. And then yeah, they've Eric Dyer making the mistake to obviously for some reason play offside um, in the ninety seventh minute um, against Lamina. But there we go. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I can't see it. I can't see any major changes. Um, and seem to be quite happy with what they did last week against Wolves. The two the two at the back. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what he said in his post-match press conference, and yeah, I can just see him sticking with that. Uh, just hoping that it's a more positive result uh, this time around, and given it's Man City versus Liverpool this weekend as well in the Premier League, someone's going to be dropping points there. So if Spurs can, you know, get three points, they could be moving right up that table again and making a bit more space between themselves and Villa, what would be nice, especially as they're coming into such a tough run of games with Man City uh, away and then West Ham and Newcastle at home prior to Christmas. So, yeah, Spurs just need to carry on getting the points on the board, really. It's Saturday lunchtime, that Man City-Liverpool game, isn't it? So we'll, we'll know exactly what's happened by the time Spurs play on Sunday. We will, we will. Right, I think we'll leave it there for today's latest episode of golden guest hot tottenham so thank you for listening in just keep with us at football.london for all your latest tottenham news to grab our huge discount off your nordvpn plan go to nordvpn.com forward slash gold guest you can receive an extra four months for free and there's no risk with nord's 30-day money-back guarantee the link is in the episode description box